in one of the most highly anticipated boxing matches of the year here at the newly named Desert Diamond Arena where they're actually breaking down the event right behind me. Jake Paul defeated Anderson Silva via unanimous decision. Now many people thought that this would be a much easier fight for Paul. However, that turned out not to be the case when he went up against his childhood idol. That's right, Lindsay. The team hasn't announced their plans for how they will commemorate the anniversary, but they did tell our Michael Donahue that Bobby Freeman will be a part of the plans. Not only did I have a bunch of fun out here, but so did former Arizona Cardinal and Pro Bowler Sean Phillips, as well as former Bellator featherweight champion AJ McKee. Your favorite Thanksgiving staples are expected to cost 44% more this year than last year. The James Webb Space Telescope captured highly detailed snapshots of the pillars of creation. The pillars are three towers made of interstellar dust and gas with newly formed stars. To baseball now, where the Arizona Diamondbacks wrapped up their 24th season this fall. The franchise has seen many faces come and go over the years. The Arizona National Livestock Show and Youth Auction provides an opportunity for the future farmers of America and the 4-H. It's providing an opportunity to help these young farmers pay for college. Cronkite News reporter Michelle Aaron tells us how kids and teenagers are learning life lessons through animals. To hit and not be hit. The sweet science of boxing seems so simple, yet it's one of the most difficult formulas to perfect. 13-year-old David King Garcia, or Little David as he's known, showed he could slip and rip at a young age. I was four years old, not three, and my tata brought this punching bag. My tata said, like, hey, like, he got some pretty good, he got some pretty good hands. He, on his third birthday, we bought him a, a little boxing dummy, and man, this guy would bang the heck out of it. And he had his, you know, his hook, his left, and I would tell David, man, this guy, he's something else he can hit. Little David's natural talent was easy to see, and his father, David Garcia, decided to foster that talent, taking his son's career into his own hands. But finding the balance between father and coach was difficult at first. It was hard, like, can't see my son get hit in the face, you know, for a living. When he's in the fight, you can't look at him as your son. You have to look at him as your fighter, because any emotion gets involved. But we've been doing it so long, it just it's, we don't think about that stuff no more. David and his son have spent the last decade developing a plan that will one day take little David to the top. And so far, success has come early and often. Garcia has won tournaments like the USA National Championships and the National Junior Olympics victories that have solidified King David's spot on the throne as one of the top young talents in the United States. I've seen a lot of young athletes in my time and there's a few special kids that come through that are not only athletically talented but mentally blessed with the capacity to handle some of the type of success that he's going to see. But things haven't always gone smoothly for David and his father. The elder Garcia made some life choices outside of the ring that could have completely derailed young David's boxing career. My dad got caught up with jail time and all that. And my dad would always tell me like, oh, no, nah, I'm just at work. And I'd be like, why is it taking so long? So I asked my mom, like, when is dad coming back home? And she'd be like, no, he's at work right now. Because he had a b big drinking problem. Like, it was bad. So. He came back, I was like, yo, dad, like, if you want me a box, you gotta stop drinking. And he stopped. During that time, he, it wasn't like a, a long term, it was short term, and I knew that. It was hard for them because they didn't get to see their dad. Um, but I would take them to visit whenever I get a chance. And I know little David's been there through the rough. You know, when we're going through a bad time, um, <laughs> I know when we're going through a bad time, he saw a lot of stuff he wasn't supposed to. You know, when I was living a crazy life, and um, so me and him will always have a very deep bond. The Garcias made it through the rough times and recommitted to the plan they laid out years earlier getting little David to reach his full boxing potential. The sacrifices at times can be overwhelming for both father and son. You know, I just want my dad to um, 
live a good life, you know? Um, you know, I don't want him to work. I want this boxing stuff to work. In order to obtain the life that little David wants for his family, he'll have to continue to put his health on the line. With about 80 amateur fights and countless sparring sessions logged in at the age of 13, long-term brain damage is a concern for the family. Every day we, we have to think on that, Jake, because um, it's, it's out there, it happens. Look at all the stories you hear about boxers and what happens. Look at the football players, you know, that get constantly get hit in the head. He does have a lot of wear and tear on his body. You figure he's been sparring since the age of five. I do get worried, but his style um, is, his style keeps him away from all that stuff. Good technique plus understanding the dangers helps David and his family look forward to the future instead of dwelling on the potential consequences. And there's one man with longevity in the sport that David and everyone around him believe his career will resemble. Mayweather. Mayweather. Floyd. And Mayweather. I'm going to be a next Floyd Mayweather, but better. And that's where the sweet science of knowing how to hit and not get hit will help King David reach the pinnacle of boxing royalty in a short amount of time. In Phoenix, Jacob Flores, Cronkite Sports Report. In one of the most highly anticipated boxing matches of the year here, at the newly named Desert Diamond Arena where they're actually breaking down the event right behind me. Jake Paul defeated Anderson Silva via unanimous decision. Now many people thought that this would be a much easier fight for Paul. However, that turned out not to be the case when he went up against his childhood idol. He was the one that told me I could accomplish anything if I set my mind to it. He's such an inspiration and you know, I, I had to go in there and match his heart tonight. Uh, a heart that I saw through the TV screen when I was a kid. After exchanging leather in the squared circle, Silva accepted his defeat and gave props to Paul. It's a very important that people respect the, the moment, the Jake's moment now. I know I lost, I know I failed in my whole strategy, and my opponent win, and I need to respect that. Following the fight, Paul was already looking ahead to his next match as he has his eyes set on another MMA legend is back to the drawing board mm -hmm. uh, and, and we'll we'll see who it is but you know Nate Diaz was here acting like a bitch. Uh, everyone wants that fight he tried to fight people in the hallway you know Nate stop fighting people for free let's do it mm -hmm. in the ring okay I know I know you're a little slow buddy but uh, it's okay we can make that fight happen fights of this magnitude and so much hype behind it tend to break records and that was the case for Paul versus Silva as it actually broke the record for the highest grossing boxing event in Desert Diamond Arena history. In Glendale, Jacob Flores, Cronkite News. Seeing security beefed up a little here, we've seen helicopters, drones, as well as cops on horseback. I was able to speak with Lydia Guzman with the Chicano por la Casa about what they're doing to get the vote out. And you were explaining to me what you were doing today. Could you tell the audience exactly what you were up to today? Sure. So, so today we we're going and visiting several different polling places. Uh, what we're doing is we're doing some Facebook lives on our Chicanos por la Causa Facebook page to encourage people to vote. And we were giving live updates so that people know if there's any lines or you know what the process is there, and giving tips. For example, tips on um, bringing in their their early ballots or, you know, or just other tips about ID. So these are, we're just trying to make sure that we get out the Latino vote. So specifically the Latino vote and exactly how long have you guys been running and doing this? So we announced back in April that we invested $10 million to get out the Latino vote. That means voter registration. Then we're also reaching uh, registered voters, Latino registered voters that historically don't come out to vote. These are the hardest to reach voters. And with our campaign, the, the Latino Loud Si Se Vota campaign, um, we're hoping that we would increase our, the Latino turnout to significantly have an impact on Arizona's midterm elections. Awesome, thank you so much for your time, Lydia. In Phoenix, Jacob Flores, Cronkite News. Fasten your seatbelts and check your mirrors because NASCAR is coming into town in a couple weeks. A small group of celebrities, influencers, and media had the chance to be NASCAR drivers for a day. After a 25-minute instructional video and a quick recap on the track, 
everyone got ready for the ride of a lifetime. President of Phoenix Raceway, Julie Giese, spoke about the reason behind holding an event like this. Uh, what a better way to kind of kick off that final two-week push into the race than uh, let people come out and take their own spin around Phoenix Raceway behind a race, the wheel of a race car. So it just really gives, I think, a lot of perspective um, and also just have a little bit of fun as we lead into championship weekend. Not only did I have a bunch of fun out here, but so did former Arizona Cardinal and Pro Bowler Sean Phillips, as well as former Bellator featherweight champion A.J. McKee. The experience was great. I should have drove faster, but it's okay. I mean, I, uh, uh, I wasn't being a big risk taker. I guess I should have been a risk taker, but I wasn't. But I had a blast, though. I, I'd do it again for sure. It's like getting your feet wet and you like rain. I'm going to go splash in all the puddles. <laughs> it was phenomenal, man. Great experience. I loved it. Obviously, like any other car enthusiast and adrenaline junkie, more and more and more and more. Football and MMA are two highly physical sports with dire consequences. But compared to their respective sports, both Phillips and McKee agreed that driving a race car revved up their heart rate in a similar fashion. The crazy part is I would say I was a bit more nervous for this than my own fights. <laughs> just because like I've just grown up in the fight world and fighting my whole life. So sort of like this, you know, I'm like, I, I want to learn and I want to learn and I don't want to mess up. So it's like, I, I got a bit nervous. It was a similar feeling, a similar feeling to a uh, game day where you just kind of get that rush, you know, like you, you, you're just out there. So it is that same type of adrenaline. Experiencing what it's like to ride in a stock car for the first time is an unforgettable experience. One that brings joy and a chance to see what it's like to be in a NASCAR driver's seat. For me personally, it's just fun to see those smiles, see the excitement, and just really help under people understand um, what we do here at Phoenix Raceway and what our drivers go through when they're on the race um, running for a championship. In Avondale, Jacob Flores, Cronkite News.